is the U.S. staring down the barrel of a recession? I feel like we're uh, just doing everything to keep the ship afloat instead of letting it just reset. What I mean is we're pretty much doing that for forever, at least since I've been alive, right? I mean, what do you think, Tom? What's that? Are we staring at a recession? Technically, no. Yeah, de facto, yes. Technically, no. The government's spending two trillion dollars more than they're taking in. They can they can turn they can make the they can make the GDP numbers, which is gross national spending, whatever they want it to look like, and they have. Yeah, indeed. We're, we're just so far off the reservation uh, at this point as to you know what uh, economics should actually be like, particularly after you know the debacle we saw in uh, twenty twenty. I mean, it's just. It, 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 I definitely have lost interest in the economics question over the last couple of years, uh, just simply because like, who the hell knows what the hell is going on at this point? It's nuts. But uh, that's why we got people like you, Tom, to keep uh, eyes on it for us. Cause you know, I can't make heads or tails of it anymore. It, it, it's crystal clear to me what's happening. Like, let me put it to this way, guys. If what I've said from the beginning is that Powell is doing exactly what I would do as I, if I was fed chair, I raise rates quick. I make everybody squirm. I just continue to say, look, no, no, the Fed put is dead and it's not your daddy's Fed. We don't have a globalist in charge. I'm running this thing the way we're supposed to run it. Fuck all of you. And that's what he's done. And, and that, I mean, it's just that simple. It, it's like, it, it, you know, as an Austrian, like, how do you run a central bank? Right. Well, it's a, you know, it's like mixed, it's mixed emotions, but at the end of the day, this is the institution you're running. This is what you have to do. And if you want, if you want the Fed as an organization to survive, and Powell is a, you know, he's the FOMC chair, well, then you have to stop acting at like the, the central bank of the world and you gotta start acting like the central bank of the United States. Mm. And that's what he's been doing. And everybody else has been hang has been left to hang. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. P. Budapest again here for five bucks. Look, in order to be effective, Trump needs to pick a VP that the regime hates as much as they hate Trump. No regime handler. I mean, I, I question how much, I mean, does the vice president even really like do much anymore these days? I mean, obviously we had like Dick Cheney during the Bush years, but uh, I don't know. It seems like in recent American history, that's kind of like the anomaly as opposed to, I mean, like, uh, do we really think well, the vice president has that much power anymore? What do you guys think? No, the the, the, the vice president is, has, is globalist insurance. And you want somebody, and I, I part of my argument for Gabbard is that she drives the right people crazy, uh, just as crazy as Trump does. See, see I... Because uh, she's crossed them. Uh, my dark horse pick, and I, I think I told Tom this, and he his eyes rolled backwards in his head a few times was um yeah i, I if you want to do that eric prince is your guy <laughs> oh, no. okay <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh, okay there's definitely the um uh the other counterpoint that uh people say which I don't know. It seems a little far-fetched to me. I mean, Tucker Carlson made uh, allusions to this when he interviewed Trump a couple months back. Like, what if they decide to whack Trump and then the the vice president that comes in is the new president, right? I mean, uh, that's I why there's definitely... no Nikki. That's why never mm -hmm. Nikki. Yes, indeed. Because that's what Nikki Haley was doing. They wanted to put a person in the stall as vice president, so then they then they could whack Trump. It's what they did to Reagan, guys. They gave him George W. They gave him George H. W. Bush, okay, and then they tried to whack Reagan, and then some, somehow he survived. Like it was that was always the plan was to whack Reagan and put Bush in charge, and stop it then. And you know, I, 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 I don't trust. There's nobody currently within the power structure of the GOP that is a credible VP candidate that I trust that isn't gettable or doesn't have a stack of manila folders on his desk, his or her desk. That's so deep. And it's like, you know, which, who, who which mafia has more manila folders on that side of the desk. And that's the, what you have to ask yourself. And the, hmm. I just, I look at someone like Abbott and I go, she's as unencumbered as, as, as all of them. And she's proven multiple times that she's willing to go up against these people and say, no, and say, you know what? Fuck you. Hmm. And, you know, that's be. why that's that's my main argument. And that's ultimately my main argument. That and a number of other things in order to shore up that Trump gets the you know, gets a hold of the center and part of the soccer mom set and all the rest of it. So I, you know, I think Pete Budapest is on the right track. You need somebody who's not a regime handler. And I don't, and I think I, I think Vivek is too 
he's not on the scene long enough to be trustworthy from that respect to that perspective. Gabbard's, you know, she's she's a Washington veteran. She's been in the room. She knows what it looks like. She sat on committees. She's done she's done the dirty work. And she walked away from power. Maybe mm-hmm. she walked away from power because she knew that the Democrats were going to implode and she was setting herself up for today. Maybe. Or and she's just savvy. Okay. Good for her. She's savvy. But, you know, you want people who are, that are not wedded to power. Because if Gabbard wanted to stay in, in Congress, she could have done so. If she wanted to re-enter Congress, she could have, you know, moved her home state to, I don't know, to some purple district and run as a Republican in 2022, and she'd have won. Going away, she'd have won. No problem. She could be back in, the, in, in Congress if she wanted to. But yeah, well, if your goal if, if your goal is as Vivek is running around saying that you want your whoever gets elected, they're the ones who called they're the one who call the shots, then Trump's not that guy. Trump's not the guy who's gonna come in there and he's gonna rule like a Caesar. He's going to need somebody there. Um, it may not be the vice president, but it's gonna have to be somebody very, very close who can rule like that, who can tell him exactly what they're doing, exactly what he needs to say, just as Vivek did with um, that, the whole thing with, um, oh, you know, I had a private meeting with Trump and he said, there'll never be a central bank digital currency. And then four hours later, Trump comes out and goes, there'll never be a central bank, uh, central bank digital currency under my watch. And it's like, Trump doesn't know what a central bank digital currency is. He's just saying what he was told to say. I agreed, Pete. And I think that we should be watching National Security Advisor yeah. as mm. the big office. That's Eric gonna Prince. tell the tre- Eric Prince. Treasury Department. <laughs> it's gonna be Treasury. Again, it's gonna be Treasury, Secretary of, in many ways, Secretary of State, National Security Council, all of that. That's you know, 